In the Pacific Ocean, just off the coast of Chile, lie the rainforests of Tantauco Park. A unique and highly diverse ecosystem and a haven for endangered species. But today, one of Tantauco's most famous inhabitants is under threat. The Darwin's frog is a rare and unusual amphibian. And it is vulnerable to an amphibian pandemic that is sweeping the globe. Chytrid fungus. This is the main cause of extinction of this species in recent uh, times. And this is a pandemic of amphibians that has been affecting at least 500 species across the world. We think it's the worst ever described infectious disease of of any animal. In 2023, scientists made a shocking discovery. Chytrid fungus had reached the forests of Tantauco. When one Darwin's frog gets infected with the, with the fungus, it will certainly die from the disease within a few weeks. London Zoo has long been a refuge for the world's most vulnerable amphibians. Now they're working round the clock to build a brand new biosecure facility. I'm feeling quite nervous about it. There's a lot riding on this. I've never actually seen a Darwin's frog. Right now we've got a team on their way out to collect or rescue this really imperiled population of Darwin's frogs. So they're, they're en route to the field and we're hoping to have an update very soon. 7,000 miles away, off the coast of Chile, ZSL member Chris Sargent is approaching his destination. We are about 48 hours since we set off from London. It's very remote, which is what I was expecting. It's pretty spectacular as well, and it's only going to get better, I think, once we get into the actual park itself. Food-wise, we have everything to keep us going for the next seven days. Everything we're going to need in the fields come along with us too, so we're pretty well stocked. I'm very excited and very looking forward to see what we're going to find. The research station at Coleta Inyo is a gateway to the remote Tantauco Park. Chris and a team from Tantauco Park and Renita de Darwin NGO need to prepare the station for the frogs. We're just trying to make sure the room is completely disinfected prior to moving any of the frogs in. You can never be too safe with this kind of thing. Trying to recreate something in the lab that's going to at least keep them happy and healthy. Essentially, the little frog apartments, somewhere for the frogs to stay, nice and safe, on site here, out of harm's way from the forest. With preparations complete, the search can begin. The rainforests of Tantauco cover a thousand square kilometers and have remained untouched since the end of the last ice age. It's incredibly impressive. It's very, very different to anything we've been in before. All the bark is covered in mosses, there's ferns, there's bromeliads a bit higher up as well. It just really adds to almost like quite an eerie atmosphere. It's, uh, it's excellent. There's hummingbirds up in the trees at the moment. Picaflora. Picaflora. Yeah. Finding the tiny frogs in all this vegetation won't be easy. But the team have other ways to search. I vocalize like the frog, like uh, to do a, a playback with the frog, yeah. Uh, sometimes they respond me. The frogs may not be far away, but finding them takes skill and luck. Like just a very large cricket. And every little bit of movement catches your eye. It's distinguishing between what's a frog 
some other part of the forest. After several hours in the forest, Chris spots something. Frog, got him, got him. So we've just found a Darwin's frog, just tucked down here. So the protocol is a clean gloved hand to pick him up, seal him in the bag, and then we have it, one large green Darwin's frog. Stunning animal. You've got one chance. If he disappears into the twigs and moss, I'm never going to find him again. The location of Chris's frog is carefully recorded, along with the temperature and levels of sunlight. Discovered by legendary biologist Charles Darwin, Darwin's frog is classified today as an endangered species, with chytrid fungus threatening the future of wild populations. But Chris's frog also carries an extraordinary secret. I think it's a male. Um, we think he's a pregnant male. Yeah. So we think the tadpoles are wriggling around in the vocal sac, mm -hmm. waiting to develop. So you can see the individual yeah. visible yeah, yeah. tadpoles through The heads and the tails. Oh, wow. We got counted. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's unique. Congrat congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Very lucky. Sorry. Very happy. Very elated. Once laid by the female, male Darwin's frogs swallow their eggs, keeping the tadpoles alive in their vocal sac until they're fully developed and ready to emerge. It's exciting news for the team. But with only two more days until the boat leaves, they need to find more frogs. Three more. Very happy. I get four of them. It's not that much, but yeah, I win. win. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard work, but when you find a frog, it's incredibly rewarding. It's like finding a little, a little jewel on the uh, the forest floor, like an emerald. With their deadline approaching, the team carefully catalogue each frog and swab them for chytrid fungus. The samples are flown to Santiago for testing to ensure that the frogs are not infected. The frogs still have a 7,000 mile journey to London Zoo and it's important they arrive in good health. While they await the results of the chytrid tests, Andres and Bastian get to work building a transport crate for their precious cargo. This is a species that live in, the, in this cold uh, forest, so we are going to keep a low temperature. We have insulation, we will have like ventilation in these uh, holes, and we have some freezer packs to keep the temperature low during the trip, so they will be very comfortable, uh, comfortable traveling to, to London. If they test positive for chytrid, the frogs won't be able to travel. The team do their best to stay relaxed as they wait for the results. So it's the moment of truth. All we can do is wait and hope. We already have a, a draft for, for the report I am sharing in the screen. We got some positives. So we confirm it, there are positives. And the positives okay. uh, are very few actually, only two. Two oh, samples really? have, uh, oh, uh, yeah. have uh, turned positive. So all the rest are negatives. Okay. All that's the rest are negatives. Yeah. We are very confident of the results, everything mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah. Muchas gracias a todas y todos. Muchas gracias. We got only two positives out of uh, 55 frogs. So it's very good news. Mm. Yeah. Very I good news. Very good. Yeah. yeah. With only a few hours until the boat departs, it's time to prepare the frogs for their long journey.
at London Zoo, Ben Tapley is standing by. They've got a really long journey, so opening that box is going to be one of the most anxious things I ever do. So I've got the live location for the Darwin's frogs. They could be with us any minute now. I'm looking for a van. That might be it. Yeah, this is our van. Uh, ben to anyone on the reptile team. I think there's a lot of ice in here, that's why it's so heavy. Before handling the frogs, Ben must take precautions. And these are our frogs, individually packaged. Uh, gonna take a look at one and just see how he's doing. Yeah, one perfect live <laughs> happy Darwin frog. Lovely animal, beautiful. Yeah, and he's he's all good, healthy one. Yeah, I've kind of grown up reading about Darwin's frogs, but um, yeah, seeing them for the first time is really special. Every one of the 53 frogs is in good health. I'm feeling a huge sense of relief. Frogs seem really good. I mean, jumping around, exploring. We even had one calling, which is fantastic. I wasn't expecting that already. And we are just delighted. This is just the beginning. If these frogs can breed at London Zoo, and if a cure can be found for the chytrid fungus, then their descendants may one day return to the forests of Tantauco.